that the Yeah, a little loud. A little loud. As soon as they hit the record button, here we go. Boss it on. <laughs> hey, y'all, welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jen. And today, we're back in the cannon mode. We are. It's time. It is time. Yeah, so, well, first, we've officially um, crossed the line where we are now using canned goods, the ones that I can. Yep. It's yep. time. I will allow it at this point. <laughs> as long as it gets replaced. Yes, yes, exactly. So, we've used a few. Um, we've used some corn and some other stuff. So, now we're going to start replacing it and just make sure that there's always something in there. That's exactly and right. And this is one of my favorites. It's ham and bean soup. Yep. So, we're going to make a huge pot of it. Um, we're going to eat some for dinner and then what's left over we're going to can it. Instead of having leftovers all week we're just going to go ahead and can it up and we're going to have some soup in the pantry. That's right and uh, so as you're watching this video be thinking even if you don't want to make this one yeah. you know we hope you do it's a delicious soup um, but be starting to think about the soups you make in this time of year and we always have leftovers always. right? Always. There's always, always leftovers. So go ahead and can it up. That's right. Can put it up. Put it in some mason jars, put it in the pressure canner. Yep. Make sure you get you know the amount of time and your pressure and your altitude and all that and just you know preserve it and put it in the pantry. That's right and then you got your little maybe a lunch soup if you yep. want to do it in pints or you have your family soup later down that you don't have to completely make because you've already got it in your pantry. Right now, a lot now. of people freeze it but we are 100% out of freezer space yeah. so that's not an option. And we're not I mean like we love freezing but also like the goal here is to be sustainable right. and if the power went out there goes our freeze stuff. Yep. So we're trying to get everything into the pantry that doesn't require any of that action. That's right. So let's get right at it. Ham and bean soup coming your way. Okay, so we're going to do this recipe right. We're not going to confuse you this time. Um, I'm going to show <laughs> Who wants it to you. Bat? <laughs> I'm going to show it to you as if you are just making a batch for your family for dinner. Don't worry about the cannon part. If you want to can it, just double it, triple it, quadruple it to whatever the amount that you want to make. But this is just for dinner purposes. So you're going to need one pound of dried navy beans. Great value. Y'all know we ain't fancy around here. <laughs> so one pound of dried navy beans. And you're just gonna, well I always put my beans in the freezer for 24 hours. I don't know anyone that doesn't, but it's just to make sure it kills off any kind of pests or you know anything that is on those beans because they are heavily sprayed. So when you buy them, put them in the freezer for 24 hours and then take them out and rinse them really, really well. Just try to get off whatever's on. Um, you can kind of look through, make sure there's no nasty looking beans. If there are, take them out. And then just pour them into your pot. All right. Now you're going to put some water into all your beans. Make sure they're pretty heavily covered because they will soak up that water. So now you're just going to bring it to a boil. You might have to watch it. Um, if there's no more water, add water. I've got a lot of beans in here because <laughs> I'm doing a big batch so we'll just kind of watch it but put it on high and bring it to a boil so you're bringing it to an intense high boil then once it does boil which she'll show you but you're going to turn it down to low let it simmer for two more minutes then you're going to remove the entire pot off the off the heat and let it sit for an hour yep so we'll show you that but just if you're keep taking notes here how's it going being being so lady I love beans I don't like beans, <laughs> but eat it, I can handle it in soup. It's like basically nothing in there, at least in my own opinion. All right, so we're to a boil. It took what? Yeah, fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes, but this is a big pot. Yeah, it's a so. seven. It's a seven quart pot, and it's yeah. almost full. All right, so it's boiling, and we're gonna turn it down to a simmer, which is low, and let it simmer for two minutes. Okay, the simmer is done, and now we're gonna remove it from the heat and let it sit for one hour. So it's just the beans and water, but you wanna let them sit for one hour. All right, completely off the heat, lid on, one hour. See y'all in half a second. <laughs> okay, so they were done after their hour. Um, we drained them all, and now I've got them in two separate pots because like I told you, I'm doing a big batch. But now you're gonna need a half of a fully cooked ham. So this is where it can get interesting. It's the holidays, right? Well, it is when we're doing this video. 
Um, you might be watching this at a different time, but you can always find a ham. So what we like to usually do is use our leftovers from Thanksgiving or Christmas so that those ham, all that ham stuff doesn't go to waste. So that's what we usually do with this. However, we did not have many leftover this year because they were eaten up um, quickly. It was a really good ham that we had. So I have just bought this little ham. Um, you just need a half a pound fully cooked and now we're going to cut it up into little bitty chunks so that we can throw into here. You're going to do one and a half tablespoons of minced garlic. Then you're just going to do some pepper. Um, you can put whole peppercorns if you want to but you would want to do it in like a spice bag because you don't want the peppercorns when you can it. Um, or some, some kind of thing that you can remove. I'm just doing crushed pepper because it's easier and I don't feel like doing all that mess. All right, so pepper is in. You could add a bay leaf if you wanted to. I'm not, not a huge fan of bay leaves. Then you're just gonna cover it all with chicken broth or water. I'm probably gonna do a mixture of both because I don't think I'm gonna have enough chicken broth to cover everything. Um, when I run out of chicken broth, I'll just add water and make sure it's all covered. And then you're going to simmer it for 45 minutes. It's recording. Are you going to eat this? Mm -hmm. Ham and bean soup. You like ham? Yeah, but not with beans. helper he's helping me make it um, but you're gonna simmer it for 45 minutes like I was saying um, put a lid on it make sure it's covered and set a timer for 45 minutes it's easy right <laughs> this looks right here and feels like summertime but we're in but it's not and it doesn't smell like summertime no it, it does not like winter. that's right <laughs> Same same thing we're doing, dressed a little different, smells in the air a little different, but we're always preserving, right? So what are we doing next? All right, so the canner is, this is a pressure canner. Um, you cannot water bath this. This is a pressure canner. It is heating up with uh, three quarts of water and we're gonna sanitize our jars. The soup has been simmering for 45 minutes and now we are going to add celery, carrots, and onions to both pots. All right. You would just do one pot, but. Um, yeah, we're going to add that all in, stir it up, make sure it's all incorporated, and then simmer it for 15 more minutes. One thing to note, what we're doing differently because we're canning. So if you're just wanting to make this because you're wanting to make it for dinner tonight, um, I would, this is my thing, I don't know how she feels about it, but I would add these carrots, onions, and celery when you added the ham to yeah. the beans all at the same time. If you don't, you're going to get extremely hard carrots and extremely hard celery and all that good stuff. Yeah, but where we're pressure canning, it's going to cook the food in the pressure canner. So exactly. And we then, don't want it too mushy. Right. So you, everything that we're doing is going to be a little bit on the hard side because it's going to take so long to pressure canner. So just an FYI, if you're wanting to make it for dinner, throw it all in at the same time and just let it simmer for a while until everything's in the softness that you like. There you go. Yep. All right, onions are going in. Y'all, this, I can't even, can't even describe to you the smell. It smells so good. It's not the most appealing eyesight. No. Well, it's one of those winter soups, you know, yeah. they're not. But man, it smells really good, and I'm not even the biggest bean fan. I'm becoming more and more of a bean fan the more she cooks them. I'm not going to lie, maybe my taste buds are changing as I'm getting older or whatever it is, but I used to not be able to stand it because they were so mushy. And I just couldn't stand the texture of them. And I didn't like them hard either. I mean, I didn't like any aspect of whatever form it was in. I didn't like it. But the more she's making it and the more she's basically saying, here's the dinner, eat it or don't, I, I'm starting to actually have an appetite for them. You like, not like vegetables either, but. <laughs> well, I like, I like some, just not all of them. The, I think the fresh gardening that we do has gotten me into the love of all the veggies. Um, but yeah, so. This is smelling really good and turning me into a bean fan. So if you're not, maybe this will do it too for you. All right, celery's going in. And so she hasn't mentioned exactly how much she's putting in each pot. Um, we'll have the specifics down below in the recipe. Um, but really, it's just eyeball it. You know, this it's, it all adds the flavor. But you know, if you're not the hugest celery fan, 
the little less, but add some so it has that flavor. Um, and then just kind of eyeball it, basically. You gotta get the veggies in. You gotta get the veggies yeah. in, that's right. Um, but yeah, so we'll have the specifics down below if you're like, how much are they putting in there? Carrots, Carrots going, going in. in. Oh, this looks good. That made it. That added a color pop. <laughs> All right, so we're going to simmer for 15 more minutes with the tops on. So one thing that's nice, uh, cooking in the winter, because see we got our wood burning stove going. Sorry, the dogs just disperse like crazy. Is we usually throw a cast iron on here, and uh, that water is just staying warm, and we're keeping our lids and our rings in there. Help keep them sterile, make sure nothing gets on them or anything like that, and they stay in there. And so we'll dry them off uh, once we actually put the lids on. Uh, but that's a benefit of a wood burning stove when your stove, when your actual stove is completely filled up. Just keep you some nice warm water and keep your lids and rings in there. And just to add, because I don't know if I fully set all that out, not boiling water. You do not want to put your rings and lid, well, mainly your lids and boiling water. Just warm water, keep them sterile, keep them warm, and then you'll be good to go. Boiling water could uh, compromise the uh, the seal. Okay, our soup is ready. Um, just a few notes. You want to make sure that you do bring everything to a boil at some point just so all the contents did come to a boil. Pressure canning soup is not tricky whatsoever, but you just want to make sure that you follow some very simple rules. Make sure your jars are washed and sterilized in the hot water. Make sure that your lids and your rings are in the warm water. You don't have to do your rings, but you have to do the lids, um, your seals. Make sure they're in warm water, not boiling water. Um, make sure you have some funnel of some sort, a spoon, you're gonna, for this, you're gonna need a slotted spoon and a spoon that you can gather liquid in. One of these little things, I don't know what this is called. It's a magnet. But yeah, it's, it has a magnet on it so you can get your jars and, I mean, your rings and your lids out of your hot water without having to touch it. Don't know what this little doodaddy's called either, but you need one. <laughs> um, it shows you how much headspace. This has to be a one inch headspace. And I think that's it. So we're going to fill these jars two thirds full with veggies, ham, and beans. The rest of it is going to be the liquid from the soup. So only two, thir two thirds full with the veggies and the contents. The rest will be the liquid. So let's do it. And all of those little crafty things she showed you come in a nice little pretty canning kit. Yeah, it's that's, like a little canning kit. Yeah, and that's down in the Amazon store if you're interested. It's super cheap. It's not expensive, but it's all the, the essential little things that you'll need for this. Okay, so use your little doodaddy to show your one inch headspace. Make sure you're good all the way around there. I need a knife. Hang on. Need a knife. Actually, no, I don't want to use this. Um, you want to do that, put that in there and get all the air bubbles out. And what she means by getting the air bubbles out, she's just pushing that down the sides. And that makes all the air bubbles come to the top and get so out of there. There's no bubbles trapped in there where right. things won't get cooked. I think we're good there. Just do that for all of them. Super easy. You do this for any type of canning, not just pressure canning. So while she's doing that, you may be like, why is there so many empty jars over here? So we made two big pots. We're eating this for dinner tonight. 
So because this does take a very long time in the pressure canner, we'll tell you that here in just a minute. I don't know if she already has or not. Um, we did exactly how many our pressure canner can hold for one round, which is seven, I believe. We'll find out when we get over there, but I'm pretty sure she's the one that knows. I think it was seven. So that's what, uh, what we're doing for this, just because we don't want to be out here all night doing it. And we wanted to make sure we had enough for dinner because we could have probably made about 10 or 12 of these. Yeah. All right, you got all there out? Yep. All right, let's get these uh, little tops and rings and lids and whatever the seals. There's the word. Let's mm -hmm. get them on there. Okay, so get you some distilled vinegar and a paper towel or a rag, whatever's clean. And you're going to wipe off your rims. Make sure there's nothing on there. Sometimes when you're pouring stuff in, it can overflow and get on there. So just make sure you get everything off. And that way your uh, seals won't have any issues sealing. All right, show them how that fancy little tool works there. Get up out of there. Put it on. My hands are clean. Always have clean hands. Not a ring. <laughs> And check out the sunlight right now. It's beautiful. It has got everything up on this table looking awesome. Golden hour. It is the golden hour. Look at that ham and bean soup. Mm -mm -mm. So good. Now you're going to put your rings on fingertip tight. So I don't let Zach do this part because he puts them on way too tight. If you put them on too tight, things can buckle and it's just not a good sign. So. Just fingertip tight. Okay, Zach's gonna put them in for me. I'm hoping and praying my memory's right and that it holds seven. <laughs> Pretty sure it does. We'll find out though. Oh, we'll seriously. find out with us. I think it's six. I don't know. There was six, but there was one in the middle. I yeah. think that was seven. I don't know. We're on two and we're off like four. It's been too many weeks since we canned. What is happening? <laughs> I know, I feel like we just did this. Right? Like we literally do it all summer, every summer. Yeah. Okay, it's going to hold seven, for sure. For sure. What if it holds eight? Well, then that would be what? unfortunate. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It holds seven. Lucky number Yay. seven. I was right. Thank Perfect you, memory. <laughs> okay, so now you put your lid on. You gotta make sure you get it on there tight. So, the first time we ever canned, the one thing we did wrong was we just set this on there and we locked it. Now, it was a brand new pressure canner um, and it didn't seal. So, what I like to do anytime we use a pressure canner is I like to kind of push down as I turn it. And all that's doing is making sure that seal is truly sealing in locked tight because that's what you need to build pressure. So just kind of keep an eye on that. We were all like standing halfway out the kitchen several <laughs> years ago. It was fun. Like, why is it not building pressure? And that was the reason. And you don't want to ever have that scary moment of having to take off the weight and it, doing all kinds of crazy things. So just make sure you push it down a little as you twist and you won't have any issues. So what we're doing now is we're going to actually not put the weight on yet. We're going to let it vent for 10 minutes. After set 10, a timer, 10 minutes. Yes, yeah, set a timer. So after that, we'll then put the weight on it and then we'll start building our pressure. There you go. been 10 minutes the weight is going on so we have the presto pressure canner and we really like it we've had it for how many years four years now more than that six or seven i don't know it's a great canner so it's pretty common yep and anything with those pressure canners sorry i know mean, you were just ready to roll with it and i just straight up cut you off uh with pressure canners there's really only one thing that you really need to keep check on and that's the seal on right. the inside yeah you call but, it a gasket or no yeah it's a gasket yeah. um and it's just like a wash or a washer or different stuff like that it, all it is is makes it completely seal without any air gaps so that is easy replaceable um roll king sells them yep not sponsored <laughs> yet but it just happened to be i'm wearing the hoodie <laughs> um or amazon's got them different stuff like that just wherever you bought your pressure canner they will have replacement parts uh, and the weight yep. just make sure it doesn't crack but uh, that's basically it that's it so now we're going to bring it up to 10 pounds of pressure which is right in the middle for an hour and a half they so that's going to be that. fun 
Just look for the tin. Look for the tin. <laughs> and bring it to 10 pounds of pressure for an hour and a half. And so now that is the scariest part of this for people that aren't pressure canners or haven't done it in a while. An hour and a half holding temperature is a really, really long time, right? Um, but it's fine. It is fine. I promise it is so easy. Yeah. So it's going to gain to 10 quick, pretty quick. Once it takes off, it goes. Um, and then you just move it down to medium heat and you watch it. And then if it starts creeping up, you move it down a little bit more, yeah. a little bit more. I promise you all, it's not just gonna drop off. It's no. so simple and we'll show you, we'll clip in a couple times, um, just to show you how easy it is and what we do. All right. Okay, y'all can't tell, but it's right at 10 and it's getting there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this down literally all the way to medium. Sorry, y'all couldn't see that. Maybe medium, a dash up, and I'm gonna watch it because that heat's gonna hold. Think about when you bring something to a boil um, and then you turn it down to simmer, it still has a minor boil going on, right? So it's not like it's just dropping temperature. So I'm right at 10, you get two dashes to stay on 10, and I promise it's not hard once you've done it a couple times. So we're on 10, Jen has set the timer. Isn't that right, Jen? Yes. Yes, so we are good to go and we'll check back in for you all, it'll be literally immediately, um, but probably in about 30 minutes or so to show you all where we're at and what I'm doing to kind of keep it going. Okay, we are 29 minutes left. Sorry, we got some people over eating some dinner, so it's getting a little bit louder, but we're still at 10 pressure. And you can see right here, I just showed you all earlier where we are on the uh, temperature gauge, I guess you could say, on your level. Um, all you gotta do is just keep watching it. As that, let's get you zoned in there. As that moves up a little, you move down just a tad. And then so we've been holding here. I haven't had to touch it in probably 20 minutes. It's just stayed right here. It's so simple to do. And we are on the home stretch, about 20 minutes to go. So the people we were talking about is this guy and Grammy Karen. Y'all see them all the time. Y'all say hi. Hey, hey, yeah, there they are. <laughs> Papa was here. Papa was here. He got a little bean and ham soup, and now he's on his way back to work. And how much time we got left? Uh, 56 seconds. Lost her for a minute. All right, <laughs> so we got 56 seconds. Feels like New Year's Eve with this taking. It really does. It does. It's a long time to cook, but it was seriously. I think I touched the knob three total times in this entire hour and a half, and I barely moved it down at all. And we stayed right at 10 the whole time. I promise you all. You can do it. It's super simple. So let's cut real quick and we'll show you what, what we do when this 50 seconds is up. Okay, so now we're just going to turn the heat off, completely off, and let that come down. The pressure is going to go back down to zero. And once it gets to zero, we'll show you what to do, but just turn it off. If you're a first time pressure canner, whatever you do, do not take that weight off right no. now. Like, there's, it's, a, it's very hard to mess this up but that will ruin your day because it will burn your hand. Please wait till the pressure gets all the way to zero and then we'll show you what to do. We have let our pressure get all the way down to zero so now we can take our weight off and it is still gonna shoot out a little bit, but it's okay now. So see, so you got a little bit left, but it's all the way down to zero. We're gonna let that sit for about five minutes-ish and then we'll take it off and we'll get everything out of there. Okay, they're ready to come out. Look how pretty. Yes. All right, let me put it down for I lose it. <laughs> there it is. Seven Just quarts. Like that. Seven Voila. quarts. We had a wonderful dinner with family of ham and bean soup and then we canned seven quarts of it so super easy and yeah so we had this for dinner absolutely highly with recommended some that's what i was gonna say <laughs> she just went in there and stole it didn't she just took it right out of my mouth absolutely make some cornbread in this and crumble it all up in there mm. that's the only way to have it yeah i tell you if you don't put cornbread up in that soup you're gonna be missing out yeah it's the same it ain't the same. It is not. You can't. You cannot can it with the cornbread in it. But yeah. just make it. Make it ready to make and crumble that bad boy right in that bowl. Yep. 
Mm. Gosh, we are awful. Yeah, so you put this on your shelf, and when you pull it off the shelf and you're ready to make it, just heat it up. Did you hear Sealed. that? <laughs> um, just heat it up out of the jar into a pot, and you're mm -hmm. good to go. There's your dinner for the night. Act like you went to Walmart and you bought a Campbell's soup. This is what that is yep. right there. Full blown for you, ready for the making. Yep. But uh, we hope you all enjoyed this. It's a delicious soup. It's seven more quarts added to our pantry. That's right. Uh, you know, sometimes you might think, oh, just seven quarts. Well, we've done this all year, and now yeah. we're up to like 500 quarts of stuff yeah. in our pantry. It adds up. It does. So that it's kind of like planting fruit trees. It was the best time to start was seven years ago. The next time to start is right now. Yep. Get your booties out there cannon. Do not That's be right. scared of Pull a pressure can. Canner out anytime. Pressure That's can right. something, water bath can something, and just put stuff in your pantry. Have yep. it preserved. Yep, and y'all, I know, you know, we, we're trying to like be sustainable and grow everything strictly from here. But if you're at the store and they got like a deal on something, yeah, beans of meat, or ham, yeah. pick that stuff up. Pick it up and come yeah. home and can it. Actually, we got a roast on a ginormous sale. It was like yeah. 50% off, you know, when they got their like almost time to expire kind of stuff. We're thinking about canning that if we don't eat it beforehand. But, yep. you know, just like keep your eye out for those kind of things. Canning is not just for the summer with your veggies. It's canning all year long. That's right. All right, y'all. Well, I hope y'all really enjoyed this. And we love you. And until the next one. Bye. Bye.